It's been a good day. We want to continue to do this trend uh, through the weekend. We are. We still have a couple areas uh, still uh, possibly without water, probably off Woody Drive, and also to still off of Forest Hill Road and Shenandoah Drive in that area and other little small pockets. I am encouraged that a lot of our residents, uh, almost 43,000 connections, have uh, had their water restored and for the second day consistently. So we want to continue to trend forward with that. Over the weekend, uh, we stay consistent and we'll, we've been talking with the health department. We need about a good 48 hours of consistency. Then we'll start sampling and, and start taking a lot of the areas off of the boil water notices once we get that clearance. We've already got permission to start taking the well system off, so we'll be moving through with that. So I'm very, very encouraged uh, about that uh, scenario. Uh, water main breaks, we're still working on breaks. We're also continuing to check hydrants, but we're also checking for any type of closed valves that may, uh, may be in the system that may be causing water to loop around and not get to where it needs to be. So we've already found ev evidence of that over at Chestane. Uh, we're not able to get that tank filled, but we found a closed valve and now we got uh, Chestane uh, back up to where it needs to be. So positive progress, right? A lot better than we were on Monday. And I believe going into next week, we'll be a lot better. I'm also encouraged about the discussions that we're having about potential funding sources moving forward. And I hope that those uh, discussions continue because we need those uh, available funds that can occur from uh, different agencies outside of Jackson to assist us with this water system and, and all of our uh, infrastructure systems that are plaguing the, system, plaguing the city as far as our aging infrastructure. And I'll take any questions. Dr. Williams, did you, uh, you said an additional 14,000 connections have been restored? As far as is that what I thought you thought you? No, said? I was talking about the forty-three thousand connections that we had under the boil water notice, and you know the other day you had asked me about a percentage, and I think we said about a quarter, oh, quarter. of those were still out. Well, I think that's even dramatically reduced now, and I would probably say probably less than possibly five thousand customers are still possibly without water. Uh, we are still we're going around the city and we're checking, like I said, hydrants and, and all of these things just to make sure that water is flowing, and I believe that that will ultimately decrease you know even further down uh, once uh, while we stay consistent with our pressures and building our tanks up dr williams i'd like to dive into the possibilities of this uh booster station that was mentioned in the previous meeting that that could uh keep water pressure uh strong and 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 the flow better in south jackson uh what would it take to get that booster station back to help areas further from the ob current water plant and why did it close in the first place well the first reason that the booster station was constructed was to put all of our well uh, customers onto surface water. So it, it elevated the pressure. Now, it was taken offline because of a compliance issue with the health department, okay, which we're working through. Now, the question is, if we were to put the booster station, booster station back online, once we satisfy that compliance issue, you know, would those residents want to come off well? That would have to be a further discussion that we would have to have with those, uh, those individuals who, who are currently on the well system and also with the health department. What would be the best source of water for those residents uh, moving forward? Dr. Williams, you said uh, 90 PSI is the goal you want to get there. What is it going to have to take to get from 85 and above 90? I think that uh, we still have to maintain consistency. We've made some uh, repairs at the plant. You know, we just talked in there. Uh, we're going to be working with the health department to come in and do a, a, an assessment. You know, kind of let us know uh, what what happened during that particular time. Just get some uh, other eyes on the plant to kind of kind of look at. You know what maybe something that we're missing, right? And so that we can get addressed. But 90 PSI has been the goal all along, and the plant has proven that it can produce that. But we just, uh, I think a lot of it just has to do with uh, some issues that maybe we're not seeing. And so that assessment will be definitely be helpful for us. Uh, maybe it's in, in with our raw water pumps, or maybe it's with our high service pumps that provide water into the, that allows water to go into the distribution itself. So, you know, we're welcoming that, uh, that relationship with the health department moving forward. Hopefully we'll get that done uh, very shortly and have that uh, available. And also too, you know, we're, we're maxing and, and, and producing water uh, to the best of our ability right now. 85 is good. You know, obviously we're like 90, but I think we're seeing the, the progress from even being at 85 of having water being pushed through the system and ultimately filling our tanks up.
Dr. Williams, can you just kind of just uh, describe to a layman why the system can't just immediately uh, increase its water supply from the reservoir? What are the challenges uh, with that? Well, you know, we have two primary treatment uh, options at the plant. We have a conventional side and then we have a membrane side and we can only bring so much flow into the plant, treat it, and then ultimately distribute it. So it has to be a balance. That's what we have to try and strive for. And of course, you know, making sure that the plant is uh, fully online, right? We have a we have two trains that are down and we, uh, we have six membranes that that are available for our use. So, we you know, we have a quote in right now for roughly a little over a million dollars that we're looking for funding for to get uh, another train back online. We will uh, be advertising shortly for the other train to get it back. So once we have six full trains in place, you know, a couple of UV issues uh, at the plant that, uh, that, have, that they're working now, but you know, some of that equipment needs to be replaced. It's kind of itemized in the, uh, in the request for that 47 million. So a lot of these are issues that are that will affect the process and the mechanics of the plant, and they need to be addressed. And, and so we are uh, looking for funding to, to satisfy that and, and make those repairs so we can make the plant more efficient. Um, regarding funding, the city has had one of its biggest problems has been getting water bill uh, uh, out to customers and getting that revenue to come back in. Where do we stand on that? Because at one point, there was close to 20 million a year that wasn't coming in. Um, that probably could have gone to the, the type of maintenance you're talking about. Are, are, are the bills getting out to customers now? I think, as you know, that has been documented that that's been an issue. And, it's, you know, they're working on an AMI re a remediation plan along with a new billing system. That should go online at some point in the next several months. So there's progress being made on that. And, and you know, as far as in the roots of, uh, or the mechanics of that, you know, we have hired a consultant, uh, Mike Secor and his group, the Prio group, to assist us with that. So that is uh, progress that is uh, being made. But, uh, you know, as I was trying to state earlier, that is, you know, our primary revenue, but we really need to continue to have other funding opportunities available. You know, you can't max out on that. And, and you got also got to look at this too. You know, we have compliance issues that have to be addressed and you're gonna to have to have funding for that. We also need uh, additional maintenance crews and equipment in order to, to lift up the public works department so we can respond to the issues that are uh, currently plaguing our infrastructure and maintaining it. So all of these are, uh, are issues that need to be uh, discussed and we need to find the, the revenue stream to help us resolve them. Dr. Williams, how do you make, how, how do you believe the argument was today for, to, to, to sell your case to the few legislators who showed up uh, to, to, to bring to their colleagues that the 47 million is needed? Uh, what do you think came out of, of, of that? Well, I think, you know, hopefully we were able to uh, provide information you know, to them. Uh, we had a meeting with Speaker Gunn this morning, and so there were other legislators there, and we provided uh, this information to them. We broke down, you know, the rationale of, of the request, and also to discuss, you know, the possibility of that uh, additional penny uh, on top of the penny that, we are, uh, that our residents are already paying now. I think the objective, the overall objective, is finding additional revenue that can support capital, and maintenance in the city, you know, and we, both of those need to run parallel to each other at all times. I think it's an itemized list uh, you guys sent out yesterday of the 47 million. Uh, it was dated for um, December 16th. Was this a list that was already created prior to the storm or was it created after? No, so we had already been in discussions with the EPA about deficiencies at the plant. So that was a, that, that itemized list were, basically off of uh, discussions that we had with the EPA, off an inspection that they had, and just uh, the overall uh, objective of what they want us to try and accomplish, you know, in order for us to satisfy the Safe Drinking Water Act. I think there's some confusion though about the, about the you know the, la the lack of revenue uh, question because the city of Jackson did settle this lawsuit with Siemens supposedly getting about 90 million in that settlement. So where is that money going if if we're, we still need us uh, so much more? Well, as you know, a lot of that was uh, to pay for bonds and uh, uh, to satisfy our bond covenants, and the, there's a breakdown for that, and, and you know uh, that has been available 
for uh, for the residents and and how that money was spent and so you know that is nothing new you know and i think right now that a majority of that money has been gone toward uh, what they said it was going to be uh, uh, paid for. Right now is uh, beyond the Siemens. That was a one-time settlement. What we need is consistency over the next several years, even beyond that, to satisfy capital projects, but also too, to maintain the current infrastructure that we have. So that's why the discussion was held today. You know. Even if we were to get to 47 million, that's not going to solve all our problems. We have a bunch of more problems than we have, and you're going to have to find a steady revenue in order to satisfy that.